Hi there, Matt Wade here, and in this video, we're gonna talk about a new cool feature in Microsoft Teams, and that is approvals in Teams. So let's jump right in. Approvals in Teams is a nice new feature that has been rolling out to users of Microsoft Teams worldwide as we speak. You probably already have it, and if you don't, you will soon, so if you don't see it, be patient. It is a nice tool for basically keeping an audit trail automatically uh, for getting approval on anything that you want to have reviewed by other people without it being, you know, going through some sort of like ad hoc email sending or just sending a chat to somebody and saying, is this okay? So let's actually just jump right into a demo and show you exactly how this works. So you'll find approvals pops up uh, in a number of different places in Teams. But the place that you really should pay attention to is actually the, the approvals hub. Um, if you haven't uh, looked yet, just click on the ellipsis in the app bar in Teams. And in here, you may see approvals under uh, the, the recent. If you don't, just type it in the, the find area here and uh, you'll see it pop up. Click on this and this is going to bring you to the approvals app or the app hub, uh, the approvals hub section of Teams. And this will show you any approvals that you've sent or received uh, and their status, who they were involved with, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but let me jump back to one that I actually have open right now. And I'm gonna jump back into chat. So there's an approval that I have uh, coming at me from uh, my colleague Niels, where he requested approval of this construction contract RFP. So you can see there's some information that's in, uh, incorporated in here the title has some draft and from or uh, some description of what's going on in this approval also has a file that i can look at it tells me who requested it and who is uh, pending response so if i click on view details this is going to open up for me so that i can actually take action on this approval and once it opens up for me i can go forward and do whatever i need to so i can take this i can open this up uh, and review the file. Um, I can re uh, provide comments on this saying, looks good. I can reject it, I can approve it, up to me. So I'm just gonna go forward and say approve. So that is now going to update in the chat. So the way that he actually initiated with this was by clicking the little approval uh, icon underneath the message. And if I do that, it's going to bring up a page here where I can go forward and actually start my own approval. So here is where I can, um, uh, enter a number of uh, pieces of information about this. Now this is in a private chat. Uh, interestingly, if uh, I use a private chat, I can only add members of the chat as approvers in here. So I'm going to actually not do that because this is a one-on-one -on -one chat and I don't want to do that. You can also do this in a team. You can include multiple people from a team to uh, approve various things in the, um, uh, in, in your, uh, your approval. So I can just go into new conversation, click approval, and this can bring up the option to start an approval as well. It looks the same. The only difference here is that the approvers now can be members of my team. Um, if I want to make any type of approval, I'll just go into the approvals app. And this is really where you should go, I think. Just go to the approval, the approval hub. And up at the top right, you can just click on new approval request. So in here, um, I can go forward and I can give my approval or uh, my approval request a name. So let's say I want to have um, social media post uh, draft plan. I want to have a couple different people approve this. And then once you add multiple people, you'll see that this toggle here will automatically toggle on to require a response from all approver, approvers. If this is one of those ones where it doesn't matter who approves it, whoever picks it up first, I could always uncheck that, but let's keep that checked for now. And then I can add additional detail. Okay. Now, I would think for most approvals, there's probably gonna be a file involved in almost all situations. And that's why there's the option here to uh, add an attachment. So I'm gonna add an attachment. As of right now, the only option for this is to upload from computer. There is no option to uh, share from, let's say, um, uh, OneDrive or SharePoint or from the team or whatever. So it's just gonna upload it. We'll talk a little bit about the behind the scenes stuff in a little bit. And then I have the option to uh, either use the approve and reject buttons, which is what comes by default, or I can change the responses 
and update them here so that they are two different things. Uh, you can actually just have it be one and only give the person one option just to basically just confirm or something like that. But I'm gonna stick with approve and, uh, or uh, uh, reject. And once I press send, this is now going to end up in their, um, uh, their inbox. You know, they'll, they'll see a, a message to approve this. They'll see it in their contact or in their approval hub just like I saw the one earlier that I approved. Um, and then over time, you're going to see all of these um, uh, approvals listed under either sent or received. So uh, there's a past one that I had sent out in the past, this engineering design peer review that was approved. If I click that open, um, this was from me to me, um, but you can see here, this shows you the final status. It shows you who it went from, from me to me, which you can include yourself as a, uh, the recipient and the approver if you needed to for some reason, um, which is, uh, it can actually be useful. Okay, so that's essentially how it works. Um, it's really not all that complex. It's not all that sophisticated yet either, um, probably from a downside perspective, but the fact that you have all of this available to you um, from this one central hub is really useful. Quick tip, if you do use approvals a lot and you want this to stay on the app bar, just right click on it and click pin, and now that will stay there so it doesn't go away. So uh, let's talk about a couple of uh, the sort of technical behind the scenes things that are going on here. First off, um, the attachment. So right now there is the limit, and I hope this gets fixed. You can only send one file as an attachment to any approval. That's just the way it is. To get around that, when you do have an attachment that, or a, a request that's out there, I would recommend if you wanna send something that needs to be um, put through and has multiple things, I would actually go in and include a link to a folder that everybody has access to and include that in the comments and go forward with that, okay? Um, and actually, I just sent this, and if I refresh and open up this, uh, Niels has actually approved this just now, this, this uh, request here. So you can see that as of right now, I requested this approval, Niels approved it, uh, and Megan is pending requests. And once she approves it, then it's considered approved, right? So that file actually ends up in your OneDrive. If, uh, if you haven't looked or played with this yet, it's gonna be in a folder called approvals document. Uh, this is kind of like the Microsoft Teams chat and uh, uh, meeting recordings. They just kind of default to dumping it into OneDrive. So be it. So you can see here, this is the uh, Excel file that I just uploaded a couple minutes ago. That's where this lives and the people that um, need it are the ones who it was shared with. So if I go into manage access, you're going to see um, Oh, nope, it's not. It was made shareable to everybody in the organization. So basically it's using the, uh, the default um, sharing status that I have in the organization, which is to the level of the, or, uh, which is sharing with the organization as opposed to like sharing with everybody or sharing with who has access, which, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know if I'm in love with that, but you know, so be it. Uh, a couple other things to know about this is if you, um, add multiple people to uh, one of these things. There are uh, some things here that people would probably expect in an actual like robust approval process. One is how do you identify who signs off when? You cannot do that at this point. There is no concept of a series approval in the basic approvals experience in Teams. So if you have a thing where like you have to go through different levels of management to get approvals and it has to go up the hierarchy, can't do that yet. That's not something that exists. Um, also, if you had some sort of thing where three people can be concurrently reviewing and then when they're done, all three of them have finished, then the management person has to sign off and that's the last, you know, uh, the last step in the process. Also not supported as far as, uh, as what this is um, in Teams as it is currently. So this is definitely sort of a simple uh, feature, uh, you know, but so be it. The other thing is there's no deadlines. You would have to mention that in the comments. Uh, there's no reminders. If somebody's out of office, you're not gonna get a notification of that. You're gonna have to be kind of smart when you go forward and actually put your approvals in. Um, so just keep those things in mind. Now, that's sort of the overview of how to use the approvals within Teams without stepping outside of Teams. However, this approvals feature is actually built on top of the Power Platform. It doesn't look like that, and if you're not somebody that is used to using the Power Platform, specifically Power Automate, the workflow tool that comes with, with uh, Microsoft 365, um, you actually have a lot of power to expand on these. So if I were to go over into um, Power uh, Automate, if I refresh this, uh, in Power Automate, there's actually a section called approvals, um, believe it or not. And that's because approvals is a big part of Power Automate, which is um, 
they have a connector in Power Automate that allows people to request and uh, respond to approval requests, right? So you can see in approvals, I have received, I have sent, and I have history. So this is actually showing you all the same stuff that you saw in Teams, but it's in Power Automate. Most people don't go to Power Automate. Most people are using Teams at this point. Um, the people that do use approvals in Power Automate are probably using the Power Automate app on their phone because it's really easy to just click you know, approved. Uh, it also uh, will show up in emails if you send an approval through an email. It's actually very nice. It's a robust little you know, click and approve and it will change right in the email. But you can see actually the social media post draft is right here. It tells you who the recipients were. It gives you the um, option to cancel. I don't even know what else they have in here. If I open it up, maybe it'll give me the status pending. Yep, so all that stuff is there. But if you wanna actually make things that much more complex, you can create any workflow in Power Automate using the approvals um, connector. So if you use this connector, it will automatically register as an experience that is meant to show up in the Teams approvals hub. So even calling it approvals in Teams isn't even right. It's really just approvals, like Microsoft approvals. They just happen to be surfacing in Teams, even though it really kind of lives in Power Automate. Now, I don't know the technology behind the scenes or how they built it, but I would bet good money that approvals in Teams is just built on um, Power Automate or its, its sister app, Logic Apps. Uh, and then just surfaced correctly and easily so that it's easier for the everyday person to use in Microsoft Teams. So if you build workflows in Power Automate that do have those branching situations that are specific to your organization where you need these three people to review things in Siri or uh, uh, concurrently and then after that it has to come together and one main manager has to approve after those three people all said yes and that one manager doesn't get the approval request until all three people say yes and if one person says no that person at the top doesn't get bothered you can build that in Power Automate and you can actually do it reasonably easily um, so keep that in mind you'll also get surfaced uh, approval requests in the uh, the team's approvals hub from not only just Power Automate, well, everything is Power Automate in the background actually, but if you start an approval request in SharePoint um, or Dynamics 365 or Azure DevOps, because uh, all of these tools use Power Automate and this approvals connector in the background, those will also show up in um, in Microsoft Teams. So it's an, it is definitely a central hub and it just gives you a lot of opportunity for customizing and configuring to the way that your business works. It just means you gotta sit down and start thinking about governance and how are people going to start using this or not using it or how are you gonna limit it, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay, so that is a brief overview of how to use approvals in Teams. Again, not super sophisticated, but a huge platform to become sophisticated if you want it to be and you have the time and the effort and the expertise. Uh, to put into it. Um, so with that, if you like uh, tips like this, you definitely want to check out my upcoming book, Teach Yourself Visually Microsoft Teams. There's a whole section in there about approvals in Teams, uh, along with plenty of other stuff, uh, meetings, chat, Teams themselves, channels, all the governance, best practices, landmines to avoid. Uh, check out the link below to get uh, pre-order options uh, on Amazon, although you can find it at other uh, book retailers if you have a preference. And uh, I'm, hopefully you'll, have, uh, you'll be interested enough to, to check that out. Uh, but with that, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, a like and subscribe is always appreciated. And uh, take a look at this, play around with it. I think this could be definitely useful. One other thing, uh, Adobe Sign and DocuSign are not connected to this. This is not any. This is not a signature process. Uh, it's definitely, like I said, not sophisticated, but that process is coming. There will be connections to that. Uh, and that's also, if you want it to be a signature process, this is where you would plug this in with the Power Automate aspect. But keep your, uh, your, your eyes peeled because uh, the, in, or the integration with Adobe Sign and DocuSign is coming, which could make a lot of people excited because a lot of organizations, uh, even though Signature can literally just be somebody types their name using an account that they're logged in with because that proves their identity, the mark proves their intent, and you know authority comes from whatever the role is, like that's all you need to make a signature. Plenty of organizations still need to see like a, a physical signature for whatever old school reasons their legal department says. Uh, this uh, can still get you there if you want to go a little, a couple steps further. But if you're not willing to build on the uh, Power Platform, just wait a little while for 
the DocuSign and Adobe Sign integrations to come directly into Teams uh, itself. So, all right, happy approvals, happy uh, getting all of your things approved, and hopefully nobody ever hits the reject button on the thing that you're working on.